وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin by praising Allah, by asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his family and his companions. This is the second part of the short course by Al-Madrasatul Umariya on the Muslim family. In the first part of this course, we had spoken about an introduction to the Muslim family, some of the words that are used for family in Arabic and what they mean. And we've also spoken about some of the ayat which introduce the concept of the family, it being a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal, the importance of thanking Allah for his blessings and so on. And where we left off the episode is we spoke about how Allah Azza wa Jal created Bani Adam, all of the children of Adam, the entire human race, from a man and his wife, Adam and Hawa. And that's enough to show us the importance of the family unit that the you know from from the very beginning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam he created Adam with his wife his mate his spouse Hawa and then from them came many men and women and so that's part of the importance of the family unit and it's the first example of the Muslim family as we said so moving on from there Allah azza wa jal said wa huwa alladhi khalaqa min al-ma'i bashara فَجَعَلَهُ نَسَبًا وَصِهْرًا وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ قَدِيرًا It is he who, or he is the one, who created from water mankind. And he made mankind نَسَبًا وَصِهْرًا And نَسَب here is to do with lineage, or to do with, if you like, uh, blood relations. He made them into people of lineage, وَصِحْرَى And صِحْرَى is the relationships that come about because of marriage. The relationships that come about because of marriage. So Allah Azza wa Jal, in the beginning that person was, was born, uh, they had a mother and a father, of course the lineage through the father and the father's father and the father's father. And then that person goes on to get married and starts their own family. نَسَبًا وَصِحْرَى وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ Qadira, and your Lord is able to do all things. And this just shows us that Allah Azza wa Jal decreed from the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, from the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that Allah Azza wa Jal decreed the ties of kinship and the ties of marriage. Allah decreed the ties of kinship and Allah Azza wa Jal decreed the ties of marriage. And so in those ties of kinship and ties of marriage that make up the Muslim family, there is a great wisdom from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara In Surah Al-Tahreem, ayah number 6. O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire. Save yourselves and your families from a fire. Now, why I wanted to quote this ayah here when we're talking about the understanding of the Muslim family is that this ayah tells us that the Muslim family is a protection or it should be a protection. That a person tries not only to save themselves, but they try to save themselves and then they look to their family members. Themselves and then their family members. And so the Muslim family should be a source of protection. The family members should be protecting each other. And how is this protection achieved? This protection is achieved bi ta'atillahi azza wa jal, by obeying Allah azza wa jal. And therefore, can we not say that the Muslim family members, the idea behind it is that this family unit is supposed to be a means of obeying Allah Azza wa Jal, a means to achieving 
obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the objective behind it. To, to have a means of obeying Allah and through that obedience to Allah that the members of the family are protected from the hellfire. So the members of the family are protected from the hellfire. Another ayah that I wanted to bring up when we're talking about this introduction to the Muslim family is this statement of Allah Azza wa Jal Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah you are the best nation that has ever been brought out for the people you command what is good and you forbid what is evil and you believe in Allah now this ayah talks about the muslim nation it talks about the Muslim nation. Kuntum khayra ummah. You're the best nation. So what relationship does this have to the Muslim family? Well, if you think about it, the Muslim family is the building block of this ummah. This ummah is not in itself a, a sort of an abstract concept. Just this, this ummah. The ummah is made up of bricks. Labinat little bricks that make up the ummah and the bricks that make up the ummah is each individual muslim family so if the situation of the ummah is that the ummah is the best ummah because they are the ones who tell people to do good and forbid people from doing wrong and believe in allah then this is an evidence that this is what your family should be built upon as well this is what the muslim family should be built upon ta'muruna bil ma'ruf you command that which is good and you forbid that which is evil and you believe in Allah. So our Muslim families, that's what they should be. They should be a, a, a small unit in that big machine, which is the, you know, a small cog in that big machine, which is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Ummah al-Islamiyyah, the Islamic Ummah. That ummah that Allah said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You're the best nation to ever be brought out for the people. Because you command what is good, you forbid what is evil, you believe in Allah. That's what we want from our families. We want our families to be a cog in that machine. That means that within our families, before we look outside, before we look at our neighbors, before we look at our districts, before we look at our societies, before we look at our countries, we have to start by looking at our families. And we have to start by implementing that's those three fundamental things within our family unit before we try implementing it anywhere else. We tell people to do what is good, we stop them from doing wrong, we believe in Allah. Those are kind of, I feel like that should be like a title or a heading for every Muslim family. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Command what's good and you stop what's bad and you believe in Allah. What a wonderful thing if each member of the family could have a role to play in those three things. Down to the children, the parents, the husband, the wife, the wider family members and everyone has that as their, their goal and their dream. You tell people to do what's right and you stop people from doing what's wrong and you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. And there's another ayah in the Quran which actually clarifies this and explains that this is down to the individual. It's not something which is only achieved on the level of the you know the Muslim Ummah as a whole. Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضٍ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ This is in Surah Tawbah, ayah number 71. So Allah Azza wa Jal said, The believing men and the believing women, they are allies to one another. And that's how a Muslim family should be. They, if anyone is deserving of being allies for people, they're more deserving to be, you know, to be helping out each other and supporting each other, to be allies to one another. Ba'dhuhum awliya'u ba'd. They are supporters and allies of each other. They command what is good and they forbid what is evil. They perform the prayer and they give the zakah 
and they obey Allah and His Messenger. It is those people that Allah will have mercy upon. Indeed, Allah is Azizun Hakim, Almighty and All Wise. And the reason I quoted this ayah to you is because I wanted to show you that when you hear the ayah, Kuntum Khaira Ummatin Ukhrijakli Nas, maybe the, the feeling is that this is on the level of the Ummah. You know, it, 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 the Ummah as a whole, or individuals, you know, special people within the Ummah who tell people to do the right things and stop people from doing the wrong things and believe in Allah. But it's not actually the case. It's, it's, an, it's down to each individual. This Ummah is made up of Mu'minun wa Mu'minat. It's made up of believing men and believing women. Ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd. Helping each other, supporting each other, telling people to do the right thing. Stopping people from doing the wrong thing, performing the prayer, giving the zakah, obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger. And that if we can achieve this in our families, what are we going to get out of it? <laughs> These are the people that Allah is going to have mercy upon. These are the people that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to have mercy upon. So if we want our family to be a place of mercy, not just mercy between ourselves, but we want the mercy of Allah Azza wa for our family, then we need to achieve those things. We need to have a family that tells people to do the right thing and stops people from doing the wrong thing. Each mu'min and each mu'mina, each believing man and each believing woman in that family is telling people to do the right thing, stopping people from doing the wrong thing. Each one of them performs the prayer. Each one of them gives the zakah. Each one of them obeys Allah and obeys His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we achieve that within our family, when we optimize and we maximize the potential of every single family member to obey Allah, to obey His Messenger وسلم, to perform the salah, to tell people to do what's good, to stop them from doing what's bad, when we achieve that individually within the family members and as a family, if all of the families do that, then we achieve that as a society and that corrects both us as as a family unit, and it corrects those who are outside of that family unit as well by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now when we come to talk about the importance of the family and the importance of the family unit, one of the things that came to mind is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Ra'd. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِّن قَبَلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً Allah said, we have sent we have certainly sent messengers before you and we made for them wives and offspring. And from this, I wanted you to take from this ayah in Surah Al-Ra'd that the having a family and raising a family is from the sunan of the Anbiya. It's from the sunan, from the, uh, the, the sunnas, if you like, that have been put forward the examples which have been put forward by the prophets and the messengers alayhimu salatu wassalam. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً We made for them wives and offspring. And indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has told us about several families in the Qur'an. Now I'm going to ask you to pause the video and have a think about this one because I think this is something that a lot of you inshaAllah ta'ala would know the answer to. So have a little think about this. Can you think of as many families, and I'm not talking about individuals, families that are mentioned in the Qur'an as possible? I'm not going to mention too many, I'm just going to come up, maybe I'll mention three, maybe for example, or four. I'll mention four, inshallah. So see if you can, how many of the four you can come up with, and maybe you'll come up with some that I didn't think of as well. Families, whole families that are mentioned in the Qur'an. Pause the video, have a think about that one. Okay. So I'm hoping that you pause the video and had a little think. Uh, I'm going to mention to you four. The first one, Alu Ibrahim, the family of Ibrahim. So here we have Ibrahim, Ibrahim's wives, uh, Hajar, uh, Sarah and Hajar. Uh, we have the children of Ibrahim, Ismail and Ishaq, and then onwards the grandchildren, Yaqub and so on. And all of the prophets that came from Ibrahim, including our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is you know from the family of Ibrahim, alayhim uh, salatu wasalam. So the first one, the family of Ibrahim. 
The second one, Alu Imran, the family of Imran. Now here, I'm actually gonna, gonna slightly cheat a bit and I'm gonna actually divide the family of Imran into two because some of the scholars, the majority of the scholars, when they talked about the family of Imran, they said it refers to the mother, the father and mother of Maryam, alayhi salam. So that is Maryam and her father and mother and her family and, and so on. Uh, so they said that this is al Imran. These are the family of Imran. But others among the scholars, they said that the family of Imran refers to Musa, the family of Musa. So the, the mother and father of Musa and then Musa and his offspring. So we can take both of them from that because both of them are mentioned in the Quran. So we can take from that Ibrahim and his family and we can take from it Musa uh, and his family and we can take from it the mother and the father of Maryam and their family. So that was three. So who is the fourth one? The family of our messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And indeed all of these are mentioned to us in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Inna Allah astafa Adama wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-alameen dhurriyatan ba'duha min ba'd wallahu sami'u alim. Allah said, Indeed we chose Adam and Nuh and the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran, as we said, the family of Imran could relate to Maryam and it could relate to Musa, over all of the people, over all of the worlds. min ba'd. Offspring, some of them from the others. Now, ba'duha min ba'd, what some of the scholars said about this is that they resemble each other in their akhlaq, in their character. And I thought this was really profound, and it's not the only tafsir of the, of the ayah, but I just thought it was really profound when you're talking about the Muslim family, that if you have the right upbringing, and you have the right kind of family structure in place, then isn't the beautiful thing that the, the result will inshaAllah ta'ala be the same? And perhaps that is one of the things which is indicated by the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضُ Offspring, some of them, like some of them like the others, some of them resembling the others, meaning that they all had that righteous upbringing, they all had that beautiful family unit, and so they all had those fantastic manners, and they were all beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal, from the people that we mentioned like Maryam alayhi salam, like uh, we spoke about Musa and Harun, like Ismail and Ishaq, what do they share in common? You look at the, the righteous family and the righteous family structure. And those are all uh, examples that were given to us in the Quran. As for our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we know that Allah Azza wa Jal said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And that's in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah number 21. And we know that our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith, he said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ The best of you are those who are best to their families, and I'm the best of you to my family. So that just shows how important the family was to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we have to take the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an example, then our family should also be really important to us as well. And in this regard, we have a hadith in which Al-Aswad asked Aisha radiallahu anha, مَا كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَصْنَعُ فِي بَيْتِهِ He said, what did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to do when he was at home? قَالَتْ كَانَ يَكُونُ فِي مِهْنَةِ أَهْلِهِ فَإِذَا حَضَرَتِ الصَّلَاةِ خَرَجَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ she said, and the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, she said he used to be in the service of his family. And when the time for the prayer would come, he would go out to the prayer. SubhanAllah, I find this to be such a beautiful thing, such a beautiful, beautiful thing, that the Prophet Wasallam, who we've been commanded to take as an example, how important his family was to him 
is that when they asked Aisha what did he used to do in the house? He was serving his family. He was looking after his family. And if the best of mankind was commanded to spend time at home looking after his family, then that's something that all of us can aspire to do, inshallah ta'ala. So to conclude this episode and to conclude this kind of introduction on the Muslim family before we go on to talk about uh, specifically sort of marriage uh, and, and the beginning of the Muslim family in terms of marriage, I just wanted to sort of conclude with a hadith. And this hadith came to my mind. It's, it's a very famous hadith, it's a very long hadith, but I just wanted to quote you a part of it. And it's the hadith known as the hadith of Abu Zar or the hadith of Umm Zar. And this hadith uh, talks about 11 women who got, came together to talk about their husbands. And actually, I, I only wanted to focus on just what Umm Zara, what she said, what she said about her family and how she described her family. Because I think it's just such a beautiful description of what a family should be like. So I just thought if we quote this hadith, it would be nice just because she talks about all the different parts of the family, all the different parts of the household and how amazing they, they were to her. And then the Prophet wasallam approved of it, uh, as we'll hear at the end. So it has a real value to us in, in Islam and in terms of Islamic teaching. So Aisha, she said to the Prophet wasallam, قَالَتِ الْحَادِيَةَ أَشْرَةَ زَوْجِ أَبُوْ زَرَ فَمَا أَبُوْ زَرْ أَنَاسَ مِنْ حُلِيِّ أُذُنَيْ وَمَلَأَ مِنْ شَحْمٍ عَضُضَيْ وَبَحَّجَنِي فَبَحِجَتْ إِلَيَّ نَفْسِي She said, Abu Zar, so she's talking about her husband or her former husband. She said, Abu Zar, how, what can I tell you about Abu Zar? He made my ears heavy with jewelry. And he made my bones heavy with fat. I.e. He, he, he gave me plenty to eat and I was so comfortable that I even put on weight. And that was something beloved at the time, at that time, you know, among the women. That if a lady, she put on weight and it meant that her husband really took care of her, was really looking after her and really took care of her. So he made her ears heavy from jewelry and he made her bones heavy from the weight that she put on. And he made me happy. So I became content with myself. She became so content about because of the wonderful way that her husband, the husband, her husband Treta Abu Zara, she said, Wajadani fi ahli ghunaymatin bishak, fajalani fi ahli sahilin wa atitin wa daisin wa munak. She said, He found me among a group of shepherds on one side of a valley, or a group of poor shepherds. And he made me among a people of horses and camels and lands and grain. In other words, he, he took her from a difficult situation where she was quite poor and he gave her everything that she could have wished for. She said, فَعِنْدَهُ أَقُولُ فَلَا أُقَبَّحْ وَأَرْقُدُ فَأَتَصَبَّحْ وَأَشْرَبُ فَأَتَقَنَّحْ She said, when I'm with him, I speak and he never finds anything wrong with what I say. He never says anything bad about what I say. And I go to sleep and I wake up after the morning has come. In other words, I sleep in as much as I want. And I drink until I am content. She describes how she described her, the, how, how well her husband treated her. And then she went on to the other members of the family. She said, Ummu Abi Zar. فَمَا أُمُّ أَبِي زر, The mother of Abu Zar. What shall I tell you about the mother of Abu Zar? عُكُومُهَا رَدَاحْ وَبَيْتُهَا فَسَاحْ Said her cupboards, if you like, I don't know whether the right word for عُكُوم is, is to say cupboards, but her, her vessels, her containers are always full and her house was expansive. In other words, he didn't just look after his wife. He also looked after his mama. Cupboards were full, the house was big and beautiful. Ibn Abi Zar, Fama Ibn Abi Zar. Then she goes on to talk about his son. She says, the son of Abu Zar. What shall I tell you about the son of Abu Zar? Madji'uhu kamasalli shatbah wa yushbi'uhu dhira'ul jafrah. She said that 
his bed is like an unsheathed sword or like an exposed part of the, the palm. In other words, you know, he, he's, he's, he, he lives in a very simple way and he's satisfied with only the, uh, the dhira, the, the forearm of the sheep, of the lamb. So he eats just a little bit and he sleeps in a very, you know, in a very simple way. And that was something that was beloved of them, that he raised his son to be a strong young man, to be someone who's not, you know, sitting at home with his feet up, doing nothing, lazing around. He raised his son to be a strong young man who was content with little, whose just a little bit of food sufficed him. And that was a sign of, you know, that kind of indicates his strength and that he was, he was beloved to his mother and to his father. She said, Bin to Abi Zar, Fama bin to Abi Zar. The daughter of Abu Zar. What shall I tell you about the daughter of Abu Zar? She said that she was obedient to her mother, or obedient to her father, and obedient to her mother, and that she filled out her clothes, meaning she she was well proportioned. She filled out her clothes, and again that she was well treated. She was looked after. And she was the jealousy, she caused jealousy from her co-wife. So it describes even the daughter of Abu Zar was amazing. She then says, Jariya to Abi Zar, Fama Jariya to Abi Zar. The servant of Abu Zar. What shall I tell you about the servant of Abu Zar? La tabuthu haditha tabtitha, wala tunak wala tunakithu, miratana tanqitha. She said, the servant girl of Abu Zar, what shall I tell you about the servant girl of Abu Zar? She doesn't spread and disclose the things that we talk about, and she doesn't squander our possessions, and she doesn't fill our house with rubbish. And then the Prophet wasallam, when he heard this description of Abu Zar, the hadith continues, but I just wanted to quote you that because the way that Umm Zar describes the whole family, the, um, how amazing the whole family was. Abu Zar was amazing, his wife was happy, his mother was happy, his children were amazing, even his servant was amazing. He had such an amazing household. The Prophet وسلم, when he heard this story from Aisha radiallahu anha, he said to her, Kuntu laki ka Abi Zar li Ummi Zar. He said to her that I am to you like Abu Zar is to Umm Zar. So the Prophet affirmed that that's, that is a, a wonderful way for, for a person to be and it's a wonderful description of a wonderful household. So I just thought that's a nice thing to finish the discussion with while we're talking generally about the Muslim family without getting into the specifics, but just to talk uh, in general about the family, just to have that kind of idea of of something that was told to the Prophet ﷺ by our mother Aisha about that family where it seemed like every aspect of the family was really amazing, you know, down to the children, the husband, the wife, their relationship, the mother and the, and the son and his relationship with his mom and even down to the people, the servant girl that was working in the house, that the, the relationship between the family was so amazing and the household was so amazing. And I hope inshallah ta'ala we will come back to this hadith uh, perhaps when we talk about marriage, to talk about some of the other benefits that we can take from it, insha'Allah ta'ala. So that concludes our general discussion, just introduction if you like, to do with the Muslim family. What we're going to do insha'Allah ta'ala after this is we're going to start at the beginning. Because the beginning of a Muslim family is az-zawaj, is marriage. So we start by talking about marriage, the goals behind marriage, the kind of things that people should bear in mind, go into the rights of the husband, the rights of the wife, and maybe some of the issues that crop up in marriage and how to solve them, insha'Allah ta'ala. All of that is coming up as part of this short course from Al-Madrasa Al-Umariya on the Muslim family, insha'Allah ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.